All right, so uh, so as predicted, right? Who told you? But but John Jones gets uh, gets cleared, and there's so many moving parts here. There's so many. I want to think of where to start this. You know, one thing about Usada, and it's very hard to take this from him. And you can go around and around about Usada all you want, and you can argue about the rules all that you want. Usada has integrity, and integrity by definition of me for making this statement, I am saying whatever the rules are. You follow the rules. And I think that USADA has a history, impeccably, uh, of doing that. So they have integrity. What, you come to this John Jones thing, and all of a sudden you're going, okay, wait a second. What, what just happened? Because all we want to do is follow the rules as the rules have been explained. So first off, before I even get into the nuts and bolts of this thing, they come up with a 15-month suspension. Now, that's hilarious. That's, I mean, that's really a funny thing. It's like if I was going to meet with you guys and I told you, yeah, meet me at the... Uh, 8.48 a.m. You're going to go, 8.48? That's not a time. You, you want to meet at 8.30? Do you want to meet at 9 o'clock? 8.48 is not a time. 15 months is not a time. Why, 15, why would it be 15 months? What have they ever done in the history of USADA that didn't go in six months increments? increments? It was either six months, 12 months, 18 months, 24 months. 15 months. Why not 13 months in three weeks and... Two days and nine hours and 27 minutes. I mean, why not? 15, 15 months is not a time. Whatever. Let it go. Chalk that up to, to humor here. But let's take a little bit of a closer look because there is something very compelling here that I think a simpleton and a simple thinking mind would miss. And I think that this was presented as an insult to the masses. Looking at the masses and saying, you guys aren't very smart, so here's how we're going to give it to you. Let's back up, okay, and then I'll get into this. You guys as fans are very frustrated with the term contaminated substance. You're frustrated as fans because it is an often overused word, an overused term. It is overused, I will, I will concede to you, by people that end up in a jam with a testing company. They instantly default and defect to contaminated substance. So it gets, you guys get frustrated, but I will share with you the other side of the coin is to meet that definition by the sanctioning body, in this case USADA is very sophisticated and complex. And when an athlete is cleared on a contaminated substance uh, dialogue, they are, they, they're innocent. And, and there was a lot that went into that. I just wanna share that to you guys because I, I don't know if you guys know that. Let's back up Tim Means. Tim Means got hit for a banned substance. Tim Means was able to say without question that, and he pointed right to it, that is the only thing I take. Go and test that go to the store, buy the rest of them on the shelf, test that, that's the only thing I take. So they did, and they were all contaminated. And Tim Means was given six months. The reason he was given six months, as stated at the time, was whether you knew or you didn't know, it was still inside of your body, which you're responsible for. Okay, I don't love that. I think that intent does matter. And I think if something is outside of a reasonable expectation, that should be looked at, but we don't get to have it my way. This is the way it's ruled, and I do understand that side of it. I do understand it. I don't like it as much as accidents happen, but I accept it because then we roll in to Yoel Romero. Yoel Romero was in the exact same spot where he goes, hey guys, this is real easy, because I only take one thing, and this is the store I bought it at. Boom, they sent in an entire team. They bought every single one of those canisters off the shelf. They scientifically tested them, and guess what? Yoel Romero was telling the truth, but it was really easy. He knew what it was and he knew what his supplement was. You get to John Jones and here's where things start to get a little bit more interesting, okay? John Jones came out publicly and said, I take two to three supplements. This is publicly, he's not under oath. He doesn't have to be telling the truth, but it was at a press conference that he called to say his piece and this is simply what he said, I'm just repeating it. I take two to three substances. He was quickly called out by the media to go, well, which is it? Is it two or is it three? And John goes, well, yeah, it's, it's two or three. He stayed with it but he then cited what company it was. That company instantly came out and defended themselves and said, don't you dare bring us into this. We have labs, we use science, we are credible, we are responsible, don't you dare bring us into this. John was then on the record, not under oath, but on the record saying two to three substances. When he got to California under oath, his side turned in a total of 12 substances. There were all possibilities of what John could have done, okay? Each one of them was scientifically tested and each one of them came back negative. So you can see where the thought process was. The day he said two or three, the or three was to buy yourself a little bit of time, right? 
By the time you go into a hearing, now you brought 12 of them in. And you understand what? You're just hoping. You're crossing your fingers. You're throwing darts at a wall that one of them turns up dirty. And then I can just rewrite the story and say, yep, I took that one. Well, they didn't. They all came back negative. This is all well and fine. None of this is a, a condemnation on John. I haven't even gotten to my point yet. I'm just giving you guys some backstory because then Osada comes out with this <laughs> with 15 months. I mean, can we at least agree 15 is a very funny number? They come out with this 15 months, but they came out with the explanation that they had no belief that John had taken this intentionally. Okay. Okay. But you guys are missing the logic. You guys are missing, or they're expecting you to overlook. Why is John not still testing positive? If John took a supplement that he was never able to identify the source of, why has he not tested positive again? Not only would we allow him to test positive, not only would we understand it, we would expect that a person who took something that never was able to identify the source would test positive again. That makes sense. But John has been in the USADA pool since and he hasn't tested positive. Now, sure, John could come out and go, listen, I don't know what supplement got me. I have no idea. So I'm now following the Demetrius Johnson rule. For you people that don't know, Demetrius Johnson famously coined the phrase. I'm the UFC champion and I don't even know what's against the rules. That's why I only put food and water into my body. So John could come out and say, I don't take any, I only put food and water in my body. I'm going as straight as I possibly can. The problem with that is when you're confronted with something known as last Saturday, and he was at the Arnold Classic and got into an impromptu face-off with Anthony Rumble Johnson while out there sponsored by and supporting a supplement company that he reveals to the audience are the very supplements that he takes. That's okay. John can take supplements. John can eat food and water. He can do the supplement routine and the Demetrius Johnson rule. He can do them all. But I would expect him to test positive again. If he was unable to identify the source and continues to have behaviors and actions in the same manner as he did before, where is the other positive test? And now you guys start to see the problem. And we've seen this in other walks of life. I watched this great crime show. This guy was put in jail. He, he, he not only committed a crime, he was then sending taunting letters to his victims. And then he was sending taunting letters to the police. And the district, they were pissed. They'd had it. They locked the guy up. They put him in jail. The letters kept getting sent. They weren't postmarked from the prison. They couldn't figure that part out. But the letters kept being sent. They knew it was him. So they put him in solitary confinement, no pencils, no pieces of paper, no envelopes, no stamps, and the letters keep on getting sent. So the DA and all of their wisdom thought that the guy could foreshadow that he was going to be incarcerated and then ultimately move to solitary confinement where he would not be given the utensils needed to write the letter and decided that he must have somebody on the outside that is merely mailing the envelopes that, uh, of the letters that were pre-written. So they went to the media and they explained this to the public. We've got the right guy. So then the true perpetrator began taking the paper from the day, the day's actual paper with the date, and he began writing his messages on there and sending it to the victims and sending it to the police, at which point they realized, oh my goodness, we have the wrong guy. When you use this kind of logic, you then have to reverse engineer it. If you were to look at the cases of Yoel Romero and Tim Means. Why have those guys never tested positive again? Because they successfully identified what the source of the positive test was. When Anderson Silva and Little Nog and Junior Dos Santos and even Josh Barnett, you could bring, they were all in the same time frame. When those guys went down on contaminated substance and USADA came out and said, Man, we got this one wrong, there was no suspension. Now, a lot of time had elapsed, so you were able to look back in a case of time served, perhaps. That was never stated on the record, but perhaps that's able, how you were able to look at it. But in John Jones's case, they came up with 15 months, which I think we've all got to have a pretty good smile at, right? 
But secondly, they did find him guilty. This is a second strike. It is a second offense. And under the SADA era, allegedly, by the rules as they've been explained to us, which apparently are the rules that we will fiercely adhere to as we make them up on the spot, he's now got two strikes, allegedly. I, I don't know if there's even a three-strike rule anymore. I don't want to speak on that. I don't know enough about it. Which is my politically correct way of telling you, I do know all about it. I'm just not looking to start a... This is somebody else's fight. Let them go have it, okay? But... Uh, I think that you need to rethink it and choose whoever side you want to be on. I don't, I don't personally, I don't have a horse in the race. I love 15 months. I am going to tease them about 15 months a little bit. That's, that's really funny. But as far as uh, whether John should be cleared or not, I mean, that's settled business. I would just offer to you that do not look back at this case and then assume that yours will be treated the same. Do not look back at Yoel Romero's case and assume that yours will be treated the same. The rules uh, appear to change a little bit. I'll let you decide your own conclusion on that. But I will ask you, if it was an accident, and you're talking to a guy that's been in jail and shit, you guys want to know why well, Chael doesn't test positive anymore? Because I knew what I was taking and I quit taking it. Imagine if I didn't know how I got it. I would just continue to keep on pissing hot. And I'd be looking around, going, I don't know how this keeps happening. You got treated like fools. They treated you all like fools. 